You're about to become a file wizard. You're about to learn how to manage the files on your computer, organizing them in a way that makes sense so you know where everything is. You're about to learn how to move files around on your computer without fear, without worry. You're about to become a file wizard and master the file system once and for all. Part one of this tutorial gives you a quick orientation. Then part two walks you through exactly how to manipulate all your files. Part three looks at renaming your files and organizing your files with folders. Part four will show you how to search for files and part five closes out the tutorial with a hodgepodge of info and helpful tips. You'll find links to each of these videos in the description below this video. You're watching a video from the Mom and Dad Technology Tutorial Series. I'm making this mad TNT video series for my mom who sometimes struggles with technology. Don't get mad and blow up trying to help someone close to you. Instead, just send them this video. Your computer contains thousands and perhaps millions of files. These files may be programs or applications like picture editing software, a word processor, or a game. Or they may be a word processor document or a spreadsheet that you created. You probably also have hundreds or thousands of pictures buried somewhere on your computer along with your music library. Today is your time to understand where all those files are and how to control where your files go. If managing files has been intimidating, scary, or even humiliating, just relax and prepare to feel the stress melt away and to have your eyes opened. Remember, you are becoming a file wizard. First, let's get a simple understanding of how files are stored and organized. This is a hard drive, and this is a smaller hard drive. You'd find this in a laptop computer. And this is a solid state drive that might be in a desktop or a laptop computer. And there are even newer, smaller, and faster storage technologies installed in some computers today. Your computer has one or more of these installed. The files that make your computer work, like the Windows operating system, are stored on one of these devices, as are any of your personal files, like your pictures. Think of a drive as a big filing cabinet. This drive is not the brains of your computer, it just holds the files on your computer. Inside this big filing cabinet are lots of folders. These folders contain files. And sometimes these folders contain folders, which contain folders, which contain folders, and so on. This giant filing cabinet can be as messy or as organized as you make it. It's up to you how you want to use it. I hope to show you best how to organize your files so you never lose anything again, and how to quickly and easily find files now and years in the future when you need them. Your computer's desktop is a place where you can store files, but it's not really intended to be your main file storage location. Just like a real desk, if you stored all your physical files there, pretty soon your desk would become cluttered and unusable. You'd have difficulty finding anything and you wouldn't be able to use your desk to get any work done. If your computer's desktop looks something like this, it's probably because you have never learned how to manage the files in your computer. Today, you become a file wizard and get this monster under control. Your computer desktop is a great launching pad for big things or things you use regularly. For example, if you have a few programs you use all the time, having an icon for those programs on your desktop makes sense. You can quickly launch your web browser or your word processor from your desktop. And you may have specific documents you access on a daily basis. Having a shortcut on your desktop to access those documents just makes sense. But what about all your pictures and all your other documents? Where should you put those and how do you access them? How do you move them around, delete them, copy them, find them? There is a program on your computer made specifically for managing your files. It's called File Explorer. If you are using a computer that is running a version of Windows prior to Windows 8, 
this program is called Windows Explorer. They both do the th same thing. They let you manage your files. I'll be demonstrating File Explorer in Windows 10, so it will look a bit different from Windows Explorer in earlier versions. First, you need to know how to launch this program. There are numerous ways to do that. First, there is an icon installed down here on the Windows taskbar. By default, Windows 10 has that here. Just click to run. I'll close that each time. Second, you can right click on the start button. That's the icon on the lower left of your desktop. Again, use the right mouse button on your mouse and click start. Find File Explorer and click. And I'll close that again. Third, click on Start. In this scrolling list of all your programs, scroll down to Windows System. Click that, then you'll see File Explorer and click that to open. I'll close File Explorer. Fourth, just start typing File Explorer down here in the search box. You'll see File Explorer here at the top. Click to open. Fifth, and perhaps easiest of all, press the window key on your keyboard while simultaneously pressing the E key. File Explorer will launch immediately. Once you open File Explorer, you will see something that looks similar to my screen. What you see here will depend on what hardware and files are on your computer. So my screen won't look exactly like yours. If this is the first time you have seen File Explorer, it may look intimidating. That is until you learn your way around. So let's take a quick tour. The stuff you'll be caring about most, your actual files, appear here in the middle of the window in the file list. The files you see here change depending on which folder you are looking at. Remember that your computer has a drive that contains folders and folders contain files. Over here on the left side of the screen, we see the bigger picture of what is inside this computer. In my case, I have several drives installed in this computer you'll have at least one drive installed, normally called Drive C. By the way, you may be wondering why not Drive A or Drive B. Well, many years ago, we used removable floppy disks like this one. They stored a relatively small amount of files, and they were normally assigned to Drive A or B. Hard drives started with Drive C. Well, the naming convention stuck, and even though we no longer use these floppy drives, we still start the drive letters with drive C. Anyway, a drive always has a letter, but in addition to the letter, you can name a drive whatever you want. You can see that I've given my drives descriptive names so I know which drive it is. I like to use the make and model of the drive and the drive size so I know which drive I'm dealing with. Each drive is like its own file cabinet with separate folders and files. If you temporarily plug in a memory card from a camera, for example, or plug in a flash drive or turn on an external drive, you may see a new drive letter or a drive with a different name. Also in this left pane, which is called the navigation pane, you will see other things that are part of your computer. Some of these items give you different views or ways of seeing the same thing. So don't be surprised when you see the same drive or folder in more than one location. At the top, you'll see a quick access category. In quick access, by default, your desktop, downloads, documents, and pictures are included. Also, frequently used folders will appear in the quick access category. You can pin other libraries and folders to quick access so you can get to them more easily. And we'll cover that in a future tutorial. Libraries, which appear down here, allow you to organize files that you wish to group together in a single access point. I use the term access point because the actual files may be found in different locations on your computer and even on different drives. So a library could have documents from drive C and drive G, for example. 
The library lets you access all those diversely located files in one single access point, again known as a library. Libraries make working with files convenient and help keep you organized if you use them. A good thing about document libraries, for example, is that many programs save your documents there by default, so they help you stay organized. Your documents, pictures, music, and video libraries are already set up for you by default. We'll take a look at these libraries in greater detail in a future video. You may not realize it, but you have a user account on your computer. In fact, you may have several user accounts, each with their own libraries. This helps each user to keep their files separated from other users. Windows does a good job of keeping the files separated without you having to think about it. In the navigation pane, you will see your username, and if you click the chevron next to your name, you will see the various assets your user has. The same libraries we looked at a minute ago also appear here. These are not extra libraries, they're just a link to the same library. So you are able to access the libraries from more than one location. This part can be confusing because there are so many links in the navigation pane, but many of them are essentially duplicates that take you to the same place. Throughout this tutorial, we'll be working in the Fred Kelly user folder in Documents. There I have a folder called Learning File Explorer with files and folders that we'll manipulate as we learn. This next part is probably the nerdiest or most technical part of this tutorial, but it's nothing to fear. This is a hierarchical view of your computer. And what that means is you see the contents of your computer arranged in a rank from broad categories down to specific folders and files. It's a hierarchy. It's like a pyramid, but it's not a pyramid scheme. Desktop is the top of the pyramid. Everything else in the computer sits underneath the desktop, including the physical drives installed in the computer. Then all the folders and files that are on those drives. So if I hover over drive C, you'll notice the chevron or greater than sign that appears to the left of the drive name. If I click that, the next level down in the hierarchy appears. These are the main folders on the C drive. We are looking at what is called the root directory or folder of the C drive. The root directory contains all of your folders and files. From here, we can drill down or click down to any folder or file on this computer. Notice the greater than sign changed to a downward pointing character, almost like a V. You can click that and the contents of the drive will disappear. Click again and it reappears. If I move my mouse pointer over just a little bit and click on the actual drive name or letter, notice that the middle area changes. This file list now shows the contents of the C drive. Above the navigation pane and file list area, there is an address bar which shows you another view of this hierarchical file structure. On the far left is the broadest category, this PC. Next is the C drive. If I click on the program folder, for example, down here, the address bar is updated to show that we are now looking at the contents of the program files folder. If I double click on the Windows Defender folder, that too appears in the address bar. I'm simply drilling down deeper in the file hierarchy. The word hierarchy and hierarchical are intimidating words, but just think back to our original file cabinet analogy. First you open your file cabinet, then you open a folder, then you open a folder within the folder, and you can now pull out a file. This address bar is just a roadmap to where you are, and you can click back to something above what you are currently looking at to quickly back up. You can also use the up arrow to move up a step in the hierarchy. So if you are looking at a folder and click the up arrow, you close the folder and move up to the folder or drive containing the folder you were looking at. You also have a forward and backward arrow, very much like you find on a web browser. This takes you backward and forward through your navigation history. You can click on any greater than sign or chevron within the address bar to access a list of available devices or folders. 
For example, if I click the chevron to the right of this PC, the drop-down list shows the various drives in my computer. I can click on any of those to open that drive, and now you see its contents in the main file list area. If you click on a blank area of the address bar, the hierarchy, or some people may call it a breadcrumb trail, changes to the actual file path of the folder you are looking at. If you use DOS computers back in the 80s and 90s, you'll recognize the path that starts with the drive letter and shows the different directories or folders that get you to the file you are interested in. This is the true location of your file on your computer's drive, and this is how programs you use will refer to and access your files. You can copy this file path if necessary and paste it elsewhere. Now, let's look at the menu at the top of the window. You see the choices or tabs, File, Home, Share, and View. If you click Home, for example, you see what is called the ribbon. These are commands you can use to take action on the files and folders in, on your computer. They are grouped in related categories that you see here below the buttons. Additional tabs, called contextual tabs, will appear when required, based on what you are doing and what you click on. For example, I'll click on a picture, and notice that the picture tool appears with four additional buttons, allowing you to do simple things with your pictures. By default, you don't see the ribbon until you click on one of the options at the top, but you can come over here to the right and click the chevron to expand the ribbon so it stays open, or click again to minimize the ribbon. It's up to you if you want to keep it open. Users with larger screens may want it open all the time. I'll leave it open for this tutorial. We will cover all the details of how to use the ribbon commands in subsequent parts of this video tutorial. You can access all the parts of the tutorial with the links in the description below. We'll also cover how to use the search box over here in part four of this tutorial. Finding your needle in a haystack file is important to learn. Click up here to view the search video or click the link in the description below. Finally, I want to point out the quick access toolbar at the very top of the window. This gives you a very small set of customizable buttons that let you take quick actions. Click this down arrow to see the options here. Currently, just two buttons are turned on. You can see Properties and New Folder are checked. The two buttons here are those commands. If I click on the Properties button, it shows details about whatever folder or file is highlighted below. The next button creates a new folder. You can turn on the other Quick Access buttons if you want, and you can also relocate the access, Quick Access toolbar below the ribbon. I recommend turning on the undo and redo buttons. These make it easy to undo something such as accidentally dragging a file to the wrong place or deleting a file you wanted to keep. To the right of all the quick access buttons, you'll see the name of the folder you are currently viewing. Well, that's a quick orientation of the File Explorer program. I'm sure you have questions and comments. Please post those in the comment section below this video. And be sure to click the like button if this video helped you. There is still so much more to learn about File Explorer. We've only scratched the surface. The real meat of how to move files, delete files, copy files, and more is covered in part two of this video tutorial. Click the video here to access part two now. You can view all of the mom and dad technology tutorials by clicking the playlist here. Click here to subscribe to the Nerd Sidekick channel to be notified of new videos as they are released. I'm Fred Kelly, your Nerd Sidekick, making you the technology hero.